Happy Sabbath, everyone. You just don't know how many times I was tempted to say Happy Sabbath all throughout the week. <laughs> Whenever you're dressed for the Sabbath, it seems like it's Sabbath. Amen? So I've been holding back. I was about to say, but right now I could freely say Happy Sabbath. Oh, God is so good. Amen? Amen? Let me ask you this question. What is your favorite day of the week? Sabbath. Oh, praise God. This church knows the answer. Some of the places I... I go to, what is your favorite day of the week? Uh, Tuesday? <laughs> no! Uh, Sunday? What? Friday? N remember, what are you? Seventh-day Adventist. So what should be your favorite day? Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay, now that we have established Sabbath is your favorite day, which sunset is your favorite? <laughs> Oh, okay. Huh? Friday night. Oh, praise God. You know your answer, huh? It's, it's the Friday night sunset, not the Saturday night. Okay. But you know what? While I was growing up, it was not Friday night sunset was my favorite. It was Saturday night. Because uh, as I have mentioned to you, when we, when we started this week of prayer, I have... I have a very strict ma mother. Did, did I mention that on the first day? Huh? Or I might forget. I might have mentioned it in the previous week of prayer that I've had. <laughs> my mom was, was quite strict. Some people calls, calls my mom, she describes my mom like Hitler. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was a faithful kid growing up, going to church, not because I'm an... I'm a naturally faithful kid, but uh, I'm quite afraid of my mom. God has mercy. My mom does not have mercy. <laughs> Whenever I go and uh, shop with my mom, I could not throw tantrums like these kids in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this day and age. Whenever I throw tantrums, my mom will just look at me and whisper, if you'll not stop, when we get home, I'll break your arm. <laughs> I look at the toy that I wanted to get, I look at my arm, I love my arm more than the toy. <laughs> so I shut up. <laughs> so for me, growing up as a third generation Seventh-day Adventist, who among you here is third or fourth or fifth generation? Please raise your hand. Okay, oh, you could relate to me. It's like we got the curse, huh? <laughs> for us, like growing up, and I'm even thinking, and I'm sharing to, to some of our sisters and brothers uh, a few days ago, like sometimes we are, we are thinking, oh, I don't have a story to tell. Like you see people who have been converted to the faith. You have seen them tasted the truth or discovered the truth by themselves. It was not passed on to them. So, and I'm thinking, so what should I do to, to have like a vibrant life? Should I try drugs as well? Should I go party outside and have a conversion story? And then I was just complaining every step of the way. And then I went to India. I went to India and, and I saw the lives of our brothers and sisters there. When we were passing the street, I saw people having this, this terrible life. And it hit me. I have been complaining all these years about where I was brought up, about being a third generation Adventist. And then it dawned on me, what if I was born in that household? How long will it take for me to worship cows before I find the true God? And then it hit me, wow, I was never, I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know what I was asking for, I mean. God put me in a place where I don't have to look for Him. And sometimes I complain that the truth is being shoved down my throat. I praise God that all I have to do is open my mouth. And now, I, now while, I was, while I was still not in that, in that state, every time I go to church, what I'm really looking forward to is the sunset. Because every Sabbath, I could not watch the things that I want to watch. I could not listen to the things that I want to listen. I could not go to places that I want to go. 
And I remember one time, me and my friends, because I'm, I'm the youth leader, and it's a shame. <laughs> I'm the youth leader, and I'm leading the group. Our excitement happens when the sun sets because now it's time to go to the mall. You know how far the mall is from the church? 300 meters. And my house, I, I told you yesterday that my house is just like walking distance to the church. It's like, I'm, three steps. It, no, the, the three steps is my sister's house. <laughs> Our church is like, yeah, 15 cartwheel and two backflips, you're already there. So, and when you open my window, you'll see the mall on the right side, 300 meters. And the other one is like 800 meters. So we are in the middle of the city. So every Sabbath, every Sabbath when the sun sets, me and my friends could not wait to go to the mall and do what Filipino loves to do, video K. And for us, that was like the height of the Sabbath. And I have a, another thing, if not video K, I bring the young people in my room. And my room is not this big. My room is, is like this big. And it's, oh, no, no, no. Just, just this size. Actually, my parents somehow had a, like a road widening in my room so that the young people could, could come in, could, could hang out in my room. And you know what we do? We have movie night. And for us, that was like the peak of, of our Sabbath. The movie night. You know what? I had an addiction before. For those of you that uh, doesn't know me, I had an addiction. It's not meth. It's not, it's not drugs, but it's movies. In my room, I had 1,500 DVD collection. Yes, when my friends come into my room, it's just like they are a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> and I have a borrower's card in my room so that I would trace who borrows what. So that was like the peak of our, of our Sabbath experience. And it's sad. And, we thought that that was it, that that's the enjoyment that we have. And then people are talking to us about the blessing of the Sabbath. But why can't we get the blessing of the Sabbath? For us, the blessing is when it ends. <laughs> when it ends, that was the blessing for us. And for us, it's like a routine. And we are more excited to see our friends than to really experience Sabbath. And then one time, one of our youth group members somehow suggested, hey, Jem, Kuya Jem, Kuya is older brother. Why not let's do fasting and prayer? And I'm thinking, oh, fasting and prayer. Fasting is not one of my favorite activity. <laughs> and then, and prayer, before, my prayer life was five minutes the whole day. It's, if you combine everything, the prayer when I wake up, the prayer for food, the prayer when I sleep, it's five minutes per day. Prayer life for me is nothing. For me, I was like a go, go, go person. For me, prayer before was a waste of time. And I can believe that I'm in a prayer ministry right now. So a friend of mine, th this person suggested that, that we should, we should do a fasting and prayer. And I asked the person, so when do you want to do fasting and prayer? So let's do it during Sabbath lunch. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, <laughs> Sabbath lunch. And I'm thinking, this is really, now I'm, I, was, I was imagining all those things that happened before. That was really the Holy Spirit for a young person to be moved to skip lunch and it's potluck. <laughs> that is a miracle for a youth, amen? Uh, a youth doesn't want to miss lunch, especially potluck during Sabbath. <laughs> so we were there and we were not looking at the table. We just went to the room and did our... At first, it was quite sad because all we could think about was the food. <laughs> but when we began reading the Word, we discovered something that's more delicious than the physical food. And we studied every single week. And now it was not just one Sabbath. It happened every Sabbath. Every lunch, we go, and now we are excited to go. And we begin to study and we encounter this beautiful verse from Isaiah 58 verses 13 and 14. Have you encountered that verse about Sabbath? We have read about the Ten Commandments, about the remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
But this time, we read this beautiful verse here. Isaiah 58, verses 13 and 14. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not there, say have mercy. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll read it. King James Version. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him by what? Not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Stop. And then it hit us. This is the reason why we are not enjoying the Sabbath. It's because we have not been following the manual. It's just like having an iPhone 7. And you're just using it for selfie and for text messaging. You have not maximized it. And even worse than that, you're using it in a different way. Not speaking thine own words, not doing thine own ways. And this is, it dawned on us, this is the reason why we have not been enjoying the Sabbath, the blessing, the gift of the Sabbath before. It was because we are spending it the wrong way. Now we begin to see the blessing of the Sabbath. Now we are so excited to meet the Lord in every Sabbath. And there was one time, you know kids, you know young people, we like to do some some special stuff, some ritual or something. Our church is called Riverview, but you could not see the river from our church. You have to walk 50 meters across the road to see the river. And we wrote our, our burdens in a piece of paper, and we look for some stones to wrap that stones with that will represent that will be the last time we hold our burdens or our sins. And we went to the river, and we waited for the sun to set we sang the song over the sunset mountain of course there are no there are no mountains there because we are in the city the sun set behind the mall so over the sunset mall <laughs> so we were singing that song over the sunset mountain and then when the last glimpse of the sun was seen we threw the stone as far as we could like with all the might that we had threw it and then it was just like <sighs> It's over. And then I looked on my right, then I saw my friend crying. And you know me, I'm a, a very nosy person. I asked my friend, why are you crying? <laughs> and this person's answer somehow hit me. And this person said, because Sabbath is over. Because Sabbath is over. And then at first I was thinking, that's quite corny. I did not say that. And later on, it hit me. If Sabbath is really our favorite day, if we, want, if we really relish the time with God, we would not want Sabbath to end. Amen? Amen? If we really discover the blessing of the Sabbath, my dear friend, you would not want Sabbath to end. With that being said, let us kneel down for the prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, happy Sabbath. We give you praise and we give you thanks for you are the Lord of the Sabbath, for giving us this beautiful day wherein we could not think about our worries. We could forget all the things that have burdened us throughout the week and place them at the foot of the cross. And Lord, thank you so much that this is the day that all we could think about is you. So Lord, I ask that you please fill us with your spirit. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for what you're about to, to pour upon us. And thank you so much, Lord, for the many Sabbaths that you have given us. And Lord, we ask that this Sabbath would be the highest Sabbath yet that we'll experience. Lord, we want to have more of your presence. So Lord, I ask that you please increase our need of you, increase our hunger for you, and may we see the Sabbath, the way you want us to see the Sabbath, a delight, Lord, a joy. Thank you so much, dear Father, for giving us this day. And Lord, once again, I ask that you please hide me behind the shadow of your cross, that I will not be seen or be seen. Jesus and Jesus alone. 
be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted higher than we have lifted you up before. This, Lord, we ask in the loving name of your Son, Jesus, all your children say, Amen. Amen. Let us go back to that word. And call the Sabbath a what? Delight. A delight. The holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou what? Delight thyself in the Lord. Most of the time, we encounter this word delight, but we don't really study what this word means. When I say delight, it's like, it's like a shallow thing, isn't it? When I say delight, like, yeah, I'm happy, I'm glad. That's not what delight means. Listen to this, delight. To affect with great pleasure. Did you get that? To affect with great pleasure. Please, highly, to give or afford high satisfaction or joy. Did you get this? High satisfaction or joy. Second, a high degree of pleasure. Wow. And most of the time when you say the word pleasure, what are you associating it with? The world, isn't it? Worldly pleasure. That's fake, my dear friends. When you want to see real pleasure, take it from the author himself. Amen? In his presence, Psalm 16 verse 11, in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are what? Pleasures forevermore. And most of the time we think that the moment you become faithful to the Lord, goodbye pleasure. My dear friends, you are mistaken. The moment you give it all to God, pleasure begins. Can you say Amen. Again, your amen is not so convincing. <laughs> it's like you're doubting the word of God, my dear friends. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> my dear friends, pleasure begins. Just imagine, at thy right hand there are pleasures. What? Forevermore. You're talking, you're wanting pleasure, but you have not seen pleasure yet. You have not experienced pleasure yet if you have not fully given your all to God. Amen? Amen? My dear friends, if it's not pleasurable, it's, if it's not joyful being with God, I would not be walking with God. I would not be doing this for seven years without salary, for seven years without stipend. Why am I doing this? Am I crazy? Yes, I'm crazy. I'm crazy in love with the Lord. The more you see God, my dear friends, you cannot but fall in love with Him. And lastly, delight is more permanent pleasure than joy. Did you get this? And not dependent on sudden excitement. It is beautiful. God is giving us something that you could not find anywhere else, only in His presence. And most of the time, I was, I'm thinking about this and I'm, I'm quite ashamed of myself. Why I was somehow cannot wait before to, for Sabbath to end. Just imagine, you cannot wait for your best friend to stop talking. <laughs> it's like that, huh? Like, okay, come to our house, but you only have five minutes, my dear friend. After that, okay, leave the house. <laughs> That's how you treat your best friend? No, you want your best friend to stay. You even want your, your best friend to, to spend the night. And when the night is over, you want your best friend to move in. <laughs> That's what happens when you take pleasure in the presence of God, my dear friends. You would not want that to end. Have you noticed, of all the days of the week, when is the time that you are watching your watch so often than compared to other days? During divine service. <laughs> you cannot wait for the potluck to begin. Huh? Yes, have mercy. And if it's really God that we are craving for, we could not wait for Sabbath to begin and we don't want Sabbath to end. You're eating three times a day and some of us continuously. Huh? 
if we are eating all the time, the message that is given by God is sometimes only once a week. Praise God that we have a week of prayer now. We received it six times a week this, this week. And praise God that you're still hungry. God is good, amen? And that hunger comes from God. Okay, I, like, I want to go back to that, to that verse. Psalm 16, verse 11. In His presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Most of us are trying to find joy somewhere else, aren't we? Are we successful? No. We find fleeting happiness, but not real joy. And, and just imagine it says there, in, in His presence is fullness of joy. When you move away from His presence, you're moving away from joy. Did you get that? When you are not joyful, my dear friends, it means to say you are not in His presence. Simple, isn't it? Amen. When you are not joyful, you are not in His presence. Dear friends, stop running around and looking for joy somewhere else. Come to His presence. Amen? Amen. How do you spell joy? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's another spelling for joy. How do you spell joy? J-O-Y. J stands for? O? Y? Yourself. Can you spell joy without Jesus? How does it sound? Oi. <laughs> and that's what happens. You'll always be surprised like, Oi. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. That's what happens when you don't have Jesus in your life. When... When the trials of life hits you, you just say, oi. And when you don't have Jesus, can you put others first? No. Others, huh, goodbye. Goodbye about others. And when you don't have, when you don't put others, how do you spell it? Why? Yes, my dear brother, you'll be asking that question so often in your life. Why? 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 Without Jesus, joy is not complete. Amen? Amen? I guess we've established that. Let us go to the next line that we have skipped. Thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I will cause thee to what? To ride the what? High places, high places of the earth. My dear friends, this is a promise that when you seek God first, when you put God first, when you honor Him, what will happen is He will put you at the head and not the tail. Have we been the head? Most of the time it's not, huh? We have been like quite, most of the time, maybe the, maybe the gallbladder or not even the heart, but not the head. 2010, when I, when I visited AUP, Adventist University of the Philippines, an Indian friend of mine who's taking up dentistry, he's, he's studying to be a dentist, but he has the heart of a pastor. His friend told me, Jem, you have to listen to this, to this mission report in India. I said, tell me, brother. So there were three kids, I guess high school kids, planning to get their SATs. I don't know how they call it in India. And they're their exam, their national exam, fell on a Sabbath, on a Saturday. And these kids, these three faithful kids, are the only kids who went to their teacher, to the principal, and said, Ma'am, please call the Commission on Higher Education, and we want to, to get a, a special exam. Make long story short, the Commission on Higher Education said, No, we cannot give you a special exam. This is, this is quite serious. And they prayed and prayed. And the Lord moved the heart of the Commission on Higher Education chief. That they called, she called them again. And a few days later, she told them, you know what, we will give you, we will give you an exam. Not on, not on the regular time, but on a, on a separate time. Still on the same day. Instead of giving it from 8 to 5, we'll give it to you from 6 to 8. It's an 8-hour examination and they, were be, they will be given only two hours. These three kids did not complain. They rejoiced that they were given the chance. 
they took the exam. And friends, do you know how big India is? I'm back home, back in Asia. I'm in the Southern Asia Pacific Division. And that division has like 18 countries during my term. And I went to India to lead out in a prayer session in a division meeting. India is only, in that division is only three countries, India and two little countries. I'm thinking, wow, that's like the equivalent of 15 countries. And then an Indian guy told me, no, Jem, you are wrong. <laughs> India is like half of the world's population, which is true. India is huge. And have you noticed every time that there is a quiz B and there is a math quiz? It's always Indians that are finalists. Indians are brilliant. Huh? Are there any Indians here? And I'm thinking, what are they feeding their kids back in India? I'm thinking maybe it's the curry or something. But they are brilliant. Make long story short, the result of the SATs of the national exam came out. And the top three was this 370 Adventist kids. I will put you as the head and not the tail. I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. Amen? Amen. And I discovered that it's not just happening in India. A few years later, no, a year later, Seventh-day Adventist nursing program in, in Adventist University in the Philippines, the top one in the Philippines is a Seventh-day Adventist from AUP. And there are a lot of stories behind it. The next year, from Mountain View College, another Seventh-day Adventist. Number one, the next year, Manila Adventist College. And then, not just nursing, dentistry, medical technology. Number one, number two, number six, number eight, from Seventh-day Adventist. The next year, another Seventh-day Adventist from a Catholic university. And that that year, medical boards exam, a doctor, Seventh-day Adventist number one. Just this year, dentistry, dental students took the board exam number one, Seventh-day Adventist. My dear friends, and when you look at the lives of these young people whom the Lord has put as the head and not the tail, they are faithful Seventh-day Adventists. My dear friends, God is true to his promise. If we only follow the conditions, can you say amen? amen? I will put you as the head and not the tail. And I like this beautiful verse from 1 Samuel 2 verse 30. I'd like to, to get the last two sentences or one sentence, second to the last sentence. It says here, for them that honor me, I will honor. Amen? When it comes to us, how important is it for us to honor God than just to save ourselves? Most of the time, we put the honor of the Lord secondary because we want to save ourselves. But in the manner of saving ourselves, we actually we lose everything. Did you get this? It's a sad thing, isn't it? And I remember... Oh, this is like Adventist University of the Philippines testimony right now. Who among you here has heard about AUP ambassador singers? Okay, one Filipino and uh, the one that looks like a Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> okay. AUP ambassador singer was, is the official, was the official choir of AUP. And you know what? They represented Philippines for the national, for the international choir competition, actually world choir competition. And this competition happened in Wales, Wales in Europe. And this is the biggest world competition. And AUP has won some other international competitions. And at first, a year before that, they were so, they were so confident. They said, oh, we already have, we already have our, our, our records. And we know that we could, we could, uh, get, we could get the visa for this. They were so confident. We will, we will do this. They already have a name. The Lord rebuked them. They got denied except one person. The next, you know what? Sometimes it's a blessing to have a humbling experience, isn't it? You will know 
where your strength really comes from. I guess that's, that's the theme of our story this whole week. So they were humbled, and now be, they begin to seek God, to surrender everything to the Lord. And that particular time that when they went to, to do their, their interview, friends, they were so submissive to God, and they said, Lord, our only desire is to give the highest glory to your name. Make long story short, they were granted, all of them, the visa. So the main objective was to give the highest glory to God. This is not to display ourselves. This is for God. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes even in the ministry, it's, it's quite tricky. We are here for the glory of God, but most of the time, we are so self-conscious, aren't we? Huh? And worship becomes not a worship anymore, but a display of self. And this is the reason why there's a lot of argument. What's the type of music for the, for the church? What's the type of dress for the church? What's the type of this for the church? Because we are offering to the Lord what we want and not what the Lord requires. Did we get this? If we only come to the Lord and ask the Lord, what do you want, Lord? Because worship is not about us. Amen. Worship is about what pleases the Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen? But most of the time we come to the Lord, why do you want to sing this song? Because I sound good in it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, and, and sometimes, oh, for us we say it. <laughs> and why do you want to wear that dress? Because it emphasizes all my assets. <laughs> it's not actually for worship anymore. It's actually for, for people to see us. The question is, are we coming to the church? Are we doing this that he would be glorified? That he would be seen? My dear friends, worship is bragging about God. Not bragging about you. Amen? Amen? Amen. So before I forget, so... They, they went on with the competition. And in order for you to qualify for, for the World Choir, you have to win a gold in a different category throughout, throughout the week. And winning a gold is difficult. But God bless them, my dear friends, that they won two golds. They're the only country that won two golds. And they were so happy about it, said, praise the Lord. You know what happened? They discovered that the world choir schedule fell on Saturday, on Sabbath. And friends, it fell on Sabbath and Sabbath on summer in Europe. Good luck. And sunset during that time was 9.30 in the evening. And when they heard this, their heart was broken. They're saying, Lord, why did you bring us thus far? And yet disappoint us right now. Like you gave us this, this gold and now we could not represent you. And they were just broken hearted. They were sulking in their, in their rooms. And then one of, the, one of them said, you know what? Our main purpose here is to give the glory to God. We gave God the glory with the two golds that he has given us, didn't we? And then they begin to, to calm down. They begin to breathe and then said, so what should we do during Sabbath? And one suggested, you know what? Let's do a concert. Yes. Let's do a concert in their community church. And they had a community church there that that's where most of the choir uh, participants from other countries come and perform. And since Philippines was quite the top of, of the headlines, because this was televised all over Europe. So when they were coming out to, uh, to go to that church, they dressed up, my dear friends, that Sabbath afternoon, they dressed up like ready to, to do a concert. <laughs> the hairs were set, everything was set. They were wearing wonderful clothes. And then when they went to, to, to the church, the people saw them. This is the Philippine group who won two golds. And people begin to follow them. And it's, it's like a small church. I guess this is like the size of this, of this, uh, of this room here, a bit bigger. And the acoustic of the church was just beautiful. You know, European churches. So they sang. And by the way, my dear friends, there's no Seventh-day Adventist presence in Wales. And when they sang, people begin to come in. 
And people were just like at first standing outside. But I guess the Spirit of the Lord just pulled them in. And they began to sit down. And they sang. And then after one song, they'll read a verse. They'll read a quote from the Spirit of Prophecy. They'll give some, some message. And then they sing again. And these people were just hooked. They were lured in. <laughs> and, then, and then at the last part of their song, the conductor said, before we end this, we'd just like to let you know that uh, this is going to be our, our last song, and this is a prayer song. And this song is entitled, The Irish Blessing. You know, The Irish Blessing, May the Good Lord Bless and Keep You, type of song. And when they sang this song, the audience that were watching were crying. And then one of them was compelled to give a prayer. And after they prayed, they went to all those people who were sitting in the audience. They shook their hands and the people were asking them, Who are you people? We have not met anyone like you. You are just like angels that fell from heaven. And they began to tell them about who they are. They began to share with those people who are sitting the Jesus that they serve. And they stayed there for quite a few number of minutes or an hour. And they began to give like short Bible studies to these people. The people did not want to leave. The people wants to mingle with them. So one person has, has a different group of people. And when they're leaving this church, one of them said, This is the first time that I feel like I'm really a choir member. This is the first time that I, I begin to realize this really is a ministry. And they were crying and they were crying tears of joy. And along, along the road, while they were riding their van, they were singing and praising God. And they said, oh, it's already sunset. It's already sunset. Let's, it's almost sunset. I said, let's just go to, to the convention center and to see what's, what's the result. So they arrive at the convention center at exactly 9.30, around 9.30, 9.35. The sun has just set, and they just discovered that the contest has not yet begun. <laughs> when they realized this, they all broke down. They cried heaviest tears, tears of joy. They know that this was only possible because of God. A friend who told me this, who's part of the choir, said, Kuya Jem, we will forget everything that happened, but we will never forget that time when we arrived and we saw that the contest has not begun. We know for a fact that only God can make this happen. They went in and competed. Make long story short, they won the gold. The Seventh-day Adventists won the World Choir Competition. And when you see the videos, they're pointing to the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were all crying. And it is so amazing that even when they're packing up, they forgot something. They were in the bus already. They forgot something. Their trophy. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show that the fame, the honor, the accolades of the world is nothing. When you see God working in your lives, my dear friends, my dear young people, the applause of this world is nothing. The approval of God is something else. It's wonderful. Even if you have the applause of the world, the standing ovation of the world, if you see God crying when you look at Him, that, that doesn't count. But even the world does this on you and when you see god huge thumb up thumbs up on you my dear friends that's all worth it Amen. and this is one amazing thing with god because most of the time when you gives you your thumb up he will all you also lift you up Amen. god is amazing isn't he for them that honor me i will what honor. i will honor i don't know if any one of you has heard about a pastor called pavel goya who well, among you here has heard Pavel Goya? Oh, there are some few people who have heard Pavel Goya. I met him last week, uh, last week, last, last year in, in ASI, and I sat down in his workshop, and I was just like drooling, <laughs> listening to his testimonies. And then last, last week, Sue, I was having almost every day lunch with him in the cafeteria, 
And I was just like, <laughs> Like in all of all the stories, and I have read his book. Who among you has read his book, One Miracle After Another? Yeah. Now, that's another book that you have to write down right now. Yes. The title speaks for itself, One Miracle After Another. And I like to relate his story. He is a Romanian mm -hmm. national. And during that time, in the 19, early 1980s, I guess, or late 70s, Rom Romania is close when it comes to religion and bringing a literature, when they see you bringing a literature or, or a Bible, you would be put in prison. And, and you could not profess your, your Christian walk, or especially when you have Sabbath, oh, good luck. And oh, God bless. <laughs> so he was, he was in college. And when you go to college, you have this military training in Romania. If you are in the upper half of, of uh, of the society or of the intellectual level, if you're in the upper ha half, you'll only have nine months. If you're in the lower half, you'll have one year and six months. So praise God, he was in the nine months. And the, the, the problem is, the obstacle was, they have Sabbath duties. And you are being trained, not just by ordinary teacher, you are being trained by the surgeons and lieutenants of the military world in, in Romania. God is so good to him because you know what? Every single time he just pleads, Lord, please, I don't want to defile your Sabbath. I want to honor you in every way possible. And the Lord has given him a way out every single Sabbath. When you read a book, it's just amazing how the Lord takes him out of that situation. And one particular time he was asking, God, please give me a chance to to somehow be close to, to, my, to my officiating officials, high-ranking officials, that I will have favor in their eyes. While he was walking one day, he heard them discussing something, a very important, you could see this, this emergency look in their faces. And then they overheard, he overheard them, said, how can we repair this thing? The inspection, the general is about to, to arrive in this palace a few weeks from now. And then... Pavel said, excuse me, what, what's, what's the matter? He said, oh, this balance here fell and it almost killed the major. And this is like, this is like antique. And this palace is, is, is like antique. So everything in this palace is precious. So when the inspection comes a few weeks from now, we would be in danger. Said, Why are you asking? If you're not a craftsman, then you could not help us anyway. And Pavel said, but you know what? I'm a craftsman. He said, oh. So can you help us? Yeah, let me see what was the damage. And Pavel listed them, all the things that's needed. Make long story short, Pavel made a good job. A wonderful job. And when they saw it, oh, it's even more beautiful before it fell. <laughs> and the next thing Pavel told them, you know what? I've seen a lot of weapons just scattering around the palace grounds. I can make a case for them, a display case for them to protect them from erosion and all. And it's, it would be nice, especially for the inspection. And they asked him, would you be willing to do that? I said, of course. They gave them the materials. He finished it and it's brilliant. And they asked him, could you do some, some pave, paving works as well at the entrance? Because a truck hit one of the paving stones. Can you repair it for us as well? I said, of course. And Pavel helped them out and they said, Wow, man, you are just an answer to all the problems here. I said, you know what? He might be the solution for our stockroom problem. Our stockroom has always had a lot, of, a lot of problems, a lot of dishonest people here that we could not have a, uh, an honest result. Inventory does not always match. Would you be willing to, to take charge of the, the stockroom? And Pavel said, okay. And, and Pavel was so happy because every Sabbath, he could just lock himself in the stockroom and make the stockroom his sanctuary. Amen? Amen? But his glory days are almost over. Because one lieutenant heard about his blessings. And this lieutenant was so angry. And he said, this could not happen in my watch. So he asked the company lieutenant of Pavel to switch with him. And he called 
for the formation for everyone during that Saturday. And that Saturday was the inspection. And he called all those people. A night before that, Pavel was praying, Lord, Lord, I want to honor your name the way the three Hebrews stood up for you. I don't want to put any stain in your name. Lord, please help me. Give me the courage to stand. And Pavel prayed and prayed and prayed. And the next morning, he woke up an hour earlier before his classmates woke up. And he, he went straight to his stock room. And he spent time praying there. And now, the time has come for them to form. And I'll read to you. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> okay. Today's the day. Okay. Pavel fell into step with the others as they made their way to the training grounds, falling into formation. The young soldier found themselves looking into the eyes of one of the hardest looking commanding officers they had ever encountered. He had come to let them know who was in charge, calling the soldiers to attention. He wasted no time with formalities or small talk. He had only one item of significance on his agenda. It was Pavel. Positioning himself directly in front of him, he began screaming and yelling with much less dignity than his rank suggested. I checked with the other lieutenant. Each one admitted that you have not worked a single Saturday since your arrival here at this garrison. Goya, you're either going to work or go to prison. I will make sure of it if it's the last thing I do. Making you work on Saturday is going to be the goal of my life. That is a very high goal, my dear friends. <laughs> Making him work on Saturday. I'm going to make an example of you that will not soon be forgotten. And as you rot in prison, I will be promoted to major. The lieutenant screamed like a madman. The officer's demeanor continued to deteriorate with each determined threat. His whole body began to convulse as he stomped his feet up and down. The young soldiers looked on wide-eyed at the officer as he continued his tirade. I'm presently the informant of the Secret Service Police. I intend to make you the object of my next promotion. I plan to work for the national security, and I'm not about to let you stand in my way. You've made a mockery of this country and the military for the last time. Goya! One step forward! The officer screamed shrilly in tones that made him nearly unintelligible. Pavel obeyed, taking one step in front of the other soldiers. Now, dig a foxhole! The determined lieutenant ordered, Sir, please, understand that my conscience will not allow me to work on Saturday. I obeyed your orders to come to the training site with the other soldiers, but I'm not going to participate today. Today belongs to God, and I'm not going to do it. Pavel replied unflinchingly. You say in the presence of all these soldiers as witnesses that you're not going to obey my orders? The lieutenant screamed with bulging eyes which appeared that they would burst at any moment. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, sir, what I'm trying to say is that it's Saturday and I'm not going to dig a hole and that I'm not going to participate in training, Pavel replied, standing his ground. Disobeying my direct command in peacetime means 7 to 14 years in prison and during war times, it's 14 years to execution on the spot. Do you still refuse to obey my orders in front of all these soldiers? The lieutenant screamed, in unimaginable rage. Sir, you can make that happen if you choose, but it's Saturday and my conscience will not allow me to work. Pavel calmly stated, the lieutenant lost all semblance of sanity. He began to <laughs> foam at the mouth as he shouted. Have you seen people who are sometimes so angry? There's like an icing on the cake that's formed on the side of the mouth. that They don't realize it's already forming. Huh? And that's what's happening to him as he shouted, ranted, and raved while leaping wildly in the air. Every soldier stood motionless as they observed the officer's display of rage and insanity. Leaving the soldiers to themselves, the lieutenant stomped to the palace headquarters, more like a spewing volcano than a dignified officer. In a state of shock and afraid to move, the soldiers stood motionless for some time, unsure of what they were expected to do. 
after a few minutes, they fell out of formation and began to walk back to the barracks to wait for further, further orders without anyone <laughs> daring to walk next to the object of the morning's rage. Pavel made his way to the stockroom, locking himself in the solace of his sanctuary. He prayed as the officers convened an emergency meeting, an emergency session to decide his fate. The timing for Pavel's hearing couldn't have been worse. With the general's arrival, just moments before the meeting began, officers could be observed leaving their posts in every part of the garrison to participate in the hearing. The session began with the lieutenant's dramatic reenactment of the morning's showdown between him and a defiant young soldier. At the end of his graphic portrayal, he insisted that the lengthiest prison sentence possible be immediately imposed. With the general present, the officer deferred his position as a sophisticator. Now one of the highest military officials of the nation sat in the seat of judgment. What chance would any young soldier stand against these odds? His doom appeared to be inevitable. After listening to the charges and a brief discussion, the general requested further details concerning the, the soldier in question. Is he a religious man? He asked. Yes, he is an Adventist. One of the officers replied, Is he preaching or passing out religious propaganda to the other man? No. no? But his example has the same effect. <laughs> he drink or get into fights with the other man. No, he doesn't drink and never has had any problem with any of the other soldiers. Does he come back from his passes to the city on time? He is always on time and usually returns a little early, another officer replied. Then what is he doing that is so intolerable, demanded the general. He refuses to work on Saturdays, the lieutenant emphatically accused. I have heard all of that, but what else has he done? I would like to know more about who he is before deciding his case. The general continued. Did you see all the display cases in the palace museum? He designed and built all of them. He also repaired the valance above the window, above you when it fell to the floor a few weeks ago. <laughs> he is also the one who beautifully repaired the paving stones in the entrance way. Another officer explained, another consideration worthy of, of mention would be his responsibilities in the stockroom. Since he has taken charge of it, not one item has been missing, he added. <laughs> and you want to ruin his life? <laughs> The general asked in astonishment, looking around the room at the other soldiers, I wish all our soldiers were like him. Amen. The military is obviously a better institution with his contribution, the general added with irritation in his voice. Turning his face towards the accusing lieutenant, he said with a bit of indignation of his own, leave him alone. <laughs> if you touch this soldier, you will be in direct disregard of my orders and I guarantee you, you will lose your job. If you have nothing more on the agenda, I've heard enough. This case is closed. <laughs> Amen? Amen? The general stood and walked deliberately from the room, casting a final piercing glance in the direction of the completely subdued lieutenant. I could pick to the general like... <laughs> Pavel, open the door, it's me. A voice requested from the outside of the stockroom, recognizing the voice of an officer who had treated him kindly from the very beginning. Pavel opened the door, looking intently into Pavel's face. The officer said, be honest with me. You know, Christians are not supposed to lie. You can tell me and I will keep it as a secret. Do you have friends in the government? <laughs> no, I don't know anyone in the government. Are you a friend of the general then? <laughs> no, I never met him. Pavel assured him. Well then, there really is a God after all. Amen. The general just ordered every officer in this garrison to leave you alone. <laughs> this is unheard of in a communist country, he said, visibly shaken. Word for word, he recounted to Pavel the proceedings that had just taken place. I would have never believed it had I not seen it with my own eyes, he said as he walked out of the door. The my dear friends, this is a communist country. This is a high-ranking officer that does not believe in God. 
but now he's convinced that there really is a God. Amen? Amen. Most of the time, when it comes to our, to our Sabbath challenges, we just give in. Our lives are not even on the line. Sometimes it's just our grades. Sometimes it's just our salary. Sometimes it's just our reputation. It's not even prison or, or shoot to kill order. But we give in. And that's the reason why they would not be able to see Jesus. They would not be able to know God. Let's continue. Another knock at the door interrupted Pavel's prayers of thanksgiving and thanksgiving and praise. It was the surgeon who has also been friendly to him. He began just as the previous officer had just as the previous officer had, wondering if Pavel had connections in the government or if he was personally acquainted with the general. The surgeon also left with the same conviction. There must indeed be a God. Amen? A loud pounding on the door followed by Goya! Open the door! <laughs> signaled a much less friendly caller. Pavel recognized the voice of the maddened lieutenant. Before the door was even completely open, the lieutenant screamed in a final threat, If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to get you! I'll find something against you before your time is up here. You can count on it. With angry eyes, flashing with fire, he stormed away, muttering to himself. It's like... <laughs> From that moment on, every officer, every officer on the base knew who Pavel was. They went out of their way to make sure they treated him in a way that would please the general. <laughs> Perhaps a good word from Pavel would net them a promotion. With a smile, his commanding officers told him he was free to go to the city every Saturday, <coughs> but to make sure he wore civilian clothes to avoid any possible controversy. He was also given a free officer's pass for the train, enabling him to go home for a visit any weekend he desired. The issue pass came also with the hopes that he would call the general to let him know how well they had treated his personal friend. <laughs> Pavel couldn't help but smiling at the providence of God. The other soldiers received only three passes for home leave for the entire nine months, and they had to pay for the train fare. <laughs> the fact that Pavel's God, that God was Pavel's defender was known to all. This general knowledge proved to be very beneficial. Every other soldier in the barracks had repeatedly suffered the theft of personal belongings and special food items sent from home. Because of the fear of retribution from Pavel's God, his things were never touched. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it simply was not worth the risk. It was much safer to steal from those without a God. <laughs> Truly, his nine months in the army were, were blessed in unimaginable ways. He won the favor of nearly all. Even the madman lieutenant softened over time. God is good, my dear friends. Amen? Remember our story last Wednesday. When you surrender your battle to the Lord, the battle belongs to Him. He takes it as His. But the moment you keep on fighting the battle that the Lord has already told you to surrender to Him, my dear friends, you'll be defeated. Only God can win this battle, amen? amen. And I remember during the time, and Pavel also shared in his testimony there, every Sabbath he goes, he goes to, to town to call his parents. And during those times that, that he's still like not permitted to go, Sabbath and he will just find a way and he will be released and he needs encouragement. So he only had like one quarter. Pavel is very poor. So he said, Lord, please bless this time that this one quarter will have. That I need encouragement back home. Even this short time that I'll spend with my parents, please make this be a blessed time. He put the quarter, holds the phone. Five minutes has passed and still he's on the phone. And it continues and continues for an hour. And after he's done and he got encouraged by more than an hour conversation, he put the phone back, bling, the coin comes back. <laughs> and every single week he goes back and drops the coin 
after he calls for two hours, three hours, puts the phone down, cling, <laughs> the coin comes back. And then he shared this miracle to his friend. And this is the thing, my dear friends. Whenever God gives you a miracle, find for a way. Look for an opportunity to share that miracle. Amen? Amen. Look for a way to brag about God. Yes. Not about ourselves. Yes. Not about what we can do. Not about the strength of this church. Brag about God, my dear friends. Amen. And this is what Pavel did. He told his friend, you know what? This is happening to me every single week. And his friend said, oh, you're lying. <laughs> and Pavel said, come with me. He came. So both of them on different phone booth. They called, of course, one quarter, like five minutes. This friend is gone. Pavel is going on and on and on. And he said, I got your point. Now I know. I said, what? You found a defective phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> and Pavel said, Let's exchange phone booth then. Oh. No, they exchanged. Same thing happened. Oh. Said, now I know your secret. Said, what? You have a special coin. <laughs> they exchanged coin. Oh. Same thing happened. Yeah. And his friend was convinced. Yeah. Your God is really powerful. Yeah. And on his last day, he made a call. He talked to his parents for like 30, 45 minutes and then put the phone down and the coin did not come out because he did not need it anymore and he was walking away from the phone booth he looked up to the Lord and prayed a two word prayer thank you my dear friends God is faithful if we be only faithful to him we will see his blessings not just his blessings we will see him. The blessings are secondary, my dear friends. Having him is the primary blessing. Amen. 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 Why are we not giving all to him? We are already in the church. We are already here, my dear friends. Just submerge everything to him. Amen. You will not enjoy the full experience of God if you're just trying to dip your foot or your toes. My dear friends, take the plunge. Amen. Give in to Him. Trust everything that He said. Amen. Trust every promise that He has said because His word is true. Amen. One characteristic, one weakness of the Lord God is that He could not lie. <laughs> is that a weakness? <laughs> I'm just joking. God could not lie, my dear friends. Whatever He has promised in His Word is true. Take Him at His Word. I like this beautiful verse before I close. I like this beautiful verse from Deuteronomy 28, chapter, uh, chapter 28, verses 1 and 7. It shall come to pass, verse 1. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all nations of the earth amen? amen he will set you high above in the nations of the earth he will lift you up amen and I like verse 7 oh by the way verse 13 another another uh, promise here and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail and I like the next line. It's like a commandment. It's like a commandment. Listen to this, Sue. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Did you get this? It's like a commandment. It's as strong as that. Thou shalt be above only. You don't have any choice but only be to be above. And shall never be beneath. Isn't this powerful? If you heed what God <laughs> has spoken. And verse 7, oh, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten or defeated before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. What happened to Babel, isn't it? God is so good, my dear friends. 
Sabbath is a huge blessing. Amen? Yes. When you look at Sabbath right now, is Sabbath still a hindrance? Sabbath is a privilege. Sabbath is a delight. Sabbath is the highest joy. Sabbath is just a reminder for us of the light of the world. Who is the light of the world, my dear friends? Jesus is the light of the world, isn't he? And most of the time, he could not see the light of the world. Let this be Jesus, the light of the world. Most of the time, he could not see Jesus. Why? Because there's so many lights that's taking away our attention from the light. His light is so dim because there are so many other lights trying to get our attention. And this is the beautiful thing about Sabbath because Sabbath, we get to turn off all the lights. Can we turn off all the lights? Even the lights in the hallway. Still there's lights. Oh, now, friends, when all the lights are turned out, you can see Jesus. Amen? Amen. This is what happens every single Sabbath. Instead of complaining, oh, I can do this, oh, I can do that, my dear friends, every Sabbath, all we could see is Jesus. It's such a privilege, isn't it? And when you are in a dark place, when you see light, what do you do? You come to the light. So that's your cue. Come to the light, my dear friends. Come.